Hello and welcome to the Yarnings Podcast. I'm Christine and I'll be your host. This is episode 52. I'm calling it Play More Games. It is Wednesday, March 25th, 2015. Here in Vancouver, Washington, it is cloudy-ish, 55 degrees. It looks like it's been raining a little off and on today, but not too bad. We had some beautiful days this weekend and some cloudy days and a little bit of rain, but most of all, it was nice. Most of the time, it was nice. I will say that again. (laughs) I would like to welcome new and returning viewers. Thanks for joining me today. I am doing another day of standing uh, recording, so I'm going to try and work out the kinks on that. You'll see a few more um, little boards that are used for reflectors here and there. Um, I need to figure out how I want to put those so that they are a little less in the way, but this one over here is hiding my filing pile. It's a big mess. So we're going to put it there for right now. (laughs) All right, let's move into some life stories. So March, March is almost done. March is a month of many events in our household because there's always yarn crawl at the beginning of the month and game storm at the middle to the end of the month. And we've been doing that for... I've been doing Yard Crawl longer than I've been doing Game Storm, and I've been doing Game Storm like five years. So it keeps March. We have to be on our toes. And then with sicknesses for me in between, that made for a little a little harder recovery time in between. So I am trying to get back into a normal routine. And so the standing again is to help my my back. I'm going to be switching positions a little bit right now. Um, I'm not sure what exactly I'm doing that's aggravating it, but trying to get it stronger. So um, trying to stand with good posture. I don't, don't know how good I'm doing with that, if obviously it's hurt again, but um, just keep working on it. So that is all the life stories. Um, everything else we'll talk about as we go along. So let's move into some yarnings and adventures in knitting. I have a finished object. I'm not going to show it to you too closely because they have been worn and need to be washed. These are my new growth socks. I finished them and got to wear them on the first day of spring. I bound off a little too loosely with my Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off and they're curling over and so I haven't decided yet if I'm going to pick out my bind off and do it again but I'm kind of tempted to do that. Maybe I should do that before I wash them. It might be easier. Um, I always wind the, weave the ends in pretty well though so it's going to be a challenge. Um, I ended up with that much yarn left. I had weighed the skein when I started and it was 130 grams and I think I had 42 grams left. So that's about how much ankle length socks will take in Socks That Rock Lightweight Blue Moon Fiber Arts. This is a mill end or rare gem colorway that I've had in my stash for quite a few years. So I cast these on the beginning of February, I think, because they made me think of springy, springy happiness, and I was glad to get them off the needles. I put a lot of work on them. I must have cast them on later than that, because I put a lot of work in them uh, during yard crawl. So that was the beginning of March. So, new growth sucks. Finished object. My second work in progress is my Nuvum. It has gotten a lot, ooh, let me get those ends out of the way. It has gotten a lot of love during my events this weekend. It is so big that the yarn is being kept inside of it. <laughs> I did get another needle, so now I have one needle instead of multiples, and that is working so much better because I don't have to worry about passing the excess fabric over the joins. I have moved on to the the red, which is 
wine kettle dyed, I think. Um, this is all Knit Picks Shadow Lace Weight. Um, I have the gray at the beginning and then the purple, the pink, hibiscus, blue tonal, and then this is the wine cuddle dye. And when I'm done with the paint, with the red, which I still have quite a bit, I still have a ways to go, but as you can see, the pink stripe is skinnier than the purple stripe. The red stripe will be skinnier than the pink by, by the very definition of the increases. And then I will do gray at the outer edge for the border ruffle. Um, you'll see my pretty, my pretty stitch markers. These are the Creation by Uli stitch markers. Um, what else do I want to tell you about this? It is just great for working on while I'm doing other things, but it is getting awfully giant. So that means I can't take it quite as many places as I was able to before, but I still am carrying it around. I had I had a pretty crazy knot while I was sitting playing games at GameStorm. And so I do have another extra end to weave in over there because there was just no detangling that one. So I had to take out about 10 yards of yarn to do that. But, you know, sometimes that just happens. So that's what I'm working on right now while we're talking. I'm resting it on the de the lower part of my desk down here since it's a getting a little, a little heavy. And if I would move the other things out of the way, then I won't bump them. <laughs> so that's what I do, them. Um, the next work in progress is one that I had shown you I just dropped it on the floor. We're going to see how well I can bend down. Oh, we're doing bending with the knees. I had just started on this when I talked to you guys last time. Let's get all the pieces here. And I put a, quite a bit of work on this in between stuff this last week. So this is the Playful Stripes cardigan. And I worked the body, I made two sleeves, and now I have attached the sleeves and started in on the yoke. <laughs> this is so cute. So the little, the sleeves will need to be seamed up. They are open like that, and then the arm, there are live stitches for the armholes that will be grafted together. And I haven't done anything with this um, construction before so this will be fun to see the edging here will be little picos and the edge will fold bloop, 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 like that so you can kind of see the little bumps that it makes this is for my youngest niece Chloe and her birthday is the day after mine at the end of April um, just gonna leave that yarn down there. <laughs> um, I have four accent colors that I'm adding in here. You can see there's a pink and a green and a chocolate and then on the bottom there's the pink, there's the little side increases down there. So that is coming along really nicely. I would really like to have this done before April starts so that then I can work on more fun things that I have planned for me. So coming along, I'm really excited about how that's working. Oh dear. I guess I do have to bend down and get this. Ooh. All right. I caught it in my iPad cord. Actually, I have my iPad here. I can show you what this will look like when it's done. Switch to the other tab. So this is in um, my Goodreads. No. Yes. My good reader. There we go. This is Playful Stripes. I don't know what I'm going to do for buttons. Let me find you a fuller length picture here that will not show the the text. Mm. 
So there's how the yolk looks. There it is in the back. Isn't that pretty? So that is the Playful Strikes Cardigan by Alana Dacos, and I'm using Nip Hicks Comfy Sport. And there's a little bit of Nip Hicks Comfy, no, Nip Hicks Simply Cotton that is an older, an older one. Okay. Show notes. <laughs> I have them up on a clipboard next to you guys, so I'm not looking down so much. Oh, and then this bag. I'm in the and I'm in the middle of a row because I was doing this at a dentist appointment yesterday. That's okay. Fold them in half and show you. These are my socks in 716 sock yarn. Do I have the tag? It's not right here. I put it somewhere after the last podcast, but I really haven't stood in here very much since then. So I am doing Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern on it, and it does not come out very clear. You really can barely see where the pattern is, but it's still entertaining. I'm enjoying doing it because I've never done one, and it's one of those patterns that everybody, everybody and their brother has done, so... The other one. So I'm doing them two at a time. It's 716 knits, um, her 716 sock base. And it's a little bit hardier than some of my sock yarns, which probably will mean it will wear really well. Um, I started out doing it on zeros because I thought it's a little bit thinner than some of my yarns, and that was just way too dense. I don't remember if that was before or after I talked to you guys last, but I ripped that out. I had, I had toes. I had gotten to the, to the top of the toes and I was just not happy with the fabric. So I ripped it out, started again, and they were a good carry along project. So I'm partway through with the foot. So let's keep zooming along on those. All right, so those are all of my active works in progress. I also have my Harmonize and my Spirited Clouds. Harmonize, I'm going to try and finish this week, so it's done at the same time as the cow. Spirited Clouds didn't get any work done this week, so just keep working on those. Um, needle adjacent, I did swatch with my... Three Fates. Three Fates yarn. This is her Terra Sock Base in the Merlin colorway. And I've swatched it in two different needle sizes and I need to measure my swatch. That was as far as I got um, Friday morning, I think. Thursday morning, I don't know. Um, but I haven't had a chance. That is going to become a Drifting by Cecily Glauck McDonald since I have this sitting right here. I switched to that page. Um, it's just a cute little little um, open front kind of a shrug. I think I'll have a little bit more yardage than she calls for for my size so I should be able to make it just a touch longer. So it only really comes that far so a little bit longer will be nicer for me so I'm really excited about doing that and I got to sit and talk with Steph at GameStorm this this weekend um, she's the dyer behind three fates and that was fun we sat at a concert together so that was cool all right spinning a tail I have one more little mini hank here. I have three now. So I took off took off the stuff that was on it and just barely started my next little bit. And um, I was working on it and I had to stop real quick, so I have singles on there. So I'm probably going to have to figure out if I can Navajo apply that the way I want to or if I need to go back and take a little bit of that out. But fun stuff. It's, it's um, 
it's really fun to, to play with this. And it was nice to be able to take off another, another bit of it. I think I was doing it at the library. I didn't stay at the library very long this week, so it wasn't, it wasn't a very long... Oh, I was doing it before the concert, and my trindle, sometimes I will be spinning, and one of the little legs will come off. There's three little legs. And it flew across the room, and I had to look for it. So that was why this the <laughs> singles just got wound back in there, because... I was busy trying to find my piece of my trindle. And I try and stick it all the way in there, but it doesn't always like to stay. So I might need to go and look on their boards and see if there's any tips for it. I mean, it doesn't come off every time, but every once in a while it will do that. Okay, I think that's all of the yarnings for Knitting Community. We have two cows, two knit alongs that are finishing on the 31st of this month. That is next Tuesday and because of some appointments that I have this week, this week, yesterday, and then so I recorded on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Next week I also have a Tuesday appointment. So I will not be recording until next Wednesday. So I'll go ahead and draw on the April 1st episode. That'll go up on the 1st or the 2nd. So the knit along will complete, the knit, both knit alongs will finish on the 31st. I will close those threads and then draw for our winners and ship out some prizes. And I have some fun stuff over here. I will show those when I draw next week. So I'm hoping to finish my harmonize so that I, so that I can show it again, show another one of them next week and hopefully show off some of yours from the thread as well. I also have another giveaway coming when I record next week, so that will be fun. I am excited to keep doing these for you when I have the stuff to give. I have something that has been given to me to pass on to you, so I'm excited for that. And then we'll probably be starting another knit along. Would you guys like to have another conversation that's knit along for another quarter? I'm really enjoying it. Maybe we need to to jazz it up with something else? I don't know. If you have thoughts on that, um, leave them in the in the Ravelry thread. All right, let's move into Sagas of Geekery. This week's topic is play more games. And if you have watched Tabletop, which is a web series starring Will, Will Wheaton, he has other internet celebrities or actual celebrities or whatever come and play games with him. They are on the third season. The third season was actually Kickstartered. I think it was Kickstarter. It was one of those. I think it was Kickstarter. Um, and so we we have watched all of the first and second seasons, and we've watched part of the third season now. At at the end of every episode, he says, "Play more games," and I love that. It definitely fits with with the things that make me happy too. So this weekend I played more games. GameStorm is the convention that we went to this weekend here in Vancouver and they had seven giant shelves of games in the library. You could check them out, sit at any of the tables, and try them out. You could play by yourself with one other person. You could put a cone on your table. They had little pylon cones and that signified that you were looking for other people to play with. Um, all the games that I played were just with my husband, but he played with a lot of other people. He knows a lot of people in the gaming community because he goes to so many different events and um, then just from GameStorm every year. And so we had lots of fun. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the games that we played. I don't have any of them to show, but I'll try and um, link to pictures that I took of them or put them up on the screen. So first off, we played Roll for the Galaxy, which is by the same game designer as Race for the Galaxy, which is one of my favorite card games. We have 
all four of the expansions. The first three work together. The fourth one is separate. Um, they the, the first three work with the base game, and the fourth one works with the base game, but four doesn't work with two, one, two, three. <laughs> so they have come out with a dice game. And it's really cool. I was I was quite impressed. I wasn't sure what to expect with it because some dice games are really not my style. Um, I I haven't played a lot of dice games, and so I don't have the rolling skills. I feel like I always roll wrong, or there's so much luck that I really can't participate and still have fun. Luck games are just sometimes they you don't if you roll bad you don't get to play <laughs> you don't have options but with this game you have a lot of dice there is actual strategy to which dice you're going to put in your cup to roll and which dice stay on your board and so the pieces were very nicely made i was really impressed with that and so i ended up playing it a second time during the weekend just to kind of confirm okay was it a fluke that it was wonderful the first time no it was still really good so I've added it to my wish list that'll be one that we will add to to our collection at some point and um, then I was able to play it for the fiber and dice challenge for the two by two challenge which is two games play or yes two games that you play twice in a month that are either new or from your collection that you haven't played in two years. So that was the first one, Roll for the Galaxy. Then we played, and these were among the four day weekend. So we played Aquasphere, which is a new game by Stefan Feld, and he is one of my favorite game designers. He did two of my favorites that I have are, um, Castles of Burgundy, which you hear me talk about often, and Trajan. We don't have Notre Dame and Macau because they're out of print. I love them. Um, so I was really excited to see what his new game was like, and I liked it. It was good. It There were some fiddly parts to it, but I would really like to play it again. It was There was a lot to learn, and so... I would like to sit down with the rules myself and dig into it again. So that was Aquasphere. Then we played Suburbia, which has also been on my want to play list. Suburbia is a game where you are building a, a city. So all of the pieces of your city. It kind of has a SimCity feel to it, like the old original SimCity, where you have different zones of things that you're putting together. And that was really fun. It's by the same designer of Castles of Mad King Ludwig, and Eric got that one for Christmas. And that one I had a little harder time connecting with, but Suburbia really made a lot more sense to me. There was a little less chance as to what pieces you got, and I really would like to play that again. That one also is potential to buy. Then we played Harbor, and Harbor I had heard Rebecca talk about because she had brought it on her Disneyland trip, I think, um, from the Fiber and Dice podcast. If you are not watching the Fiber and Dice podcast, you really should because she talks about board games all the time. That's a big part of her show. Like it is mine, but hers is hers is really awesome. So check that out. So Rebecca talked about Harbor and um, it's a cute little game. It's just a small box. It's very compact and really nicely done. Um, you are doing a shipping, a shipping type game where you're building different things that help you get more goods, ship them out, and then have the money to buy more improvements to help you buy more goods. So when you have a certain number of these improvements, the game is over. And that was really fun. I, we also played that one twice. That was kind of a quick game. And so it was a no-brainer to sit there, okay, let's try it one more time. And I really enjoyed that one. That one will definitely go in our library because it'll be a good short one that we can pull out on an evening. 
Um, and then the last one that we really played was Versailles. Versailles was a big, giant, massive game where you are building the castle at Versailles. And it had these directional arrows in it that were really interesting. It was very complex, but once we got going, it made sense. Um, I don't know if I need to own that one, but it was certainly worth trying out. It was a, it was a good, solid game. It had some similarities to a couple other games that we have. Um, I think either World Without End or Pillars of the Earth, it kind of had some of that feel to it. Um, you're placing your workers in the right spot and moving them around, and it was, it was a good, solid game. I, I did enjoy that one quite a bit. And now, a bunch of the games that we played were on the list of play-to-win games. And so, if you played a game that was on this list, you filled out the little thing and entered in to win it. So then anyone who had played it, was anyone who played it and entered their information, was entered to win. So then we got to go to a thing at the end, and they drew people's names. So Versailles is one of those that if I had won it, that would have been cool. I definitely would have played it. It was a, it might not be one that I actually need to go out and buy, though. <laughs> I didn't win it, spoiler alert. <laughs> Eric did win a game, but it was not one that I've played yet, so I'll talk more about it. Um, New Haven. I'll talk more about it after I've had a chance to play it. And then the other game we played last night, Monday night, was Legendary. Just a quick game after dinner. Just fun, fun stuff. So that was a lot of games, and we look forward to this event every year. It's a really good time to try out games. With seven big giant shelves of games for options, you have to be able to find something to try out that you want to play, or old favorites. We've certainly gone and played just the old favorites, too. Two years ago, we had friends come out, and that was awfully fun, too, to have more people that we knew that were there. So hopefully we'll get to do that again another time. During the event, we'll segue into now listening, we got to see the Double Clicks concert, and I love the Double Clicks. They are a geeky sister band from Portland, and I've seen them three times now, and it's always so much fun, and I know the song's even better now because I own some of them, and it's just, just, good, geeky, happy fun. There were kids in the audience singing and dancing along too, and it's just like a big sing-along. So I did get their sticker, which may go on my laptop, and a set of their dice, which actually have little Dimitrodons and their faces, and the little cat piano. <laughs> They're all things from their songs, their shows. Um, I will link to some of their, some of their videos, or at least link to their site so you can see some of them. Just so much fun. They smell really good. I think it's because they were sitting by the tea that I'll show you in a minute. So that was my fun swag that I brought home from the Double Clicks concert. I have one of their buttons on my, on my geeky, my geeky lanyard. Let's see. Most of the buttons on here are PDX brown coats. Um, the Portland, Portland division of the brown coats, Firefly, Serenity. And that was my, my badge for the weekend. So these will go back on my geeky, my geeky bulletin board behind us where all of my knitting buttons and stuff are. That will hang on back up there. Okay, so now watching, I've been continuing on with Stargate SG-1. I've finished season one and moved on to season two. And that's it. I don't think we've watched anything else this week. It's just been... It was four days that we were at GameStorm, and then just 
resting one of the other days, dentist appointment and stuff yesterday. So it's just been, we haven't had time to do anything. We have a, we have two Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and a whole bunch of castles. I'm so behind on castle, I don't understand how that happened. So, more to watch. <laughs> Maybe this weekend we will get back to all of the fun things. All right, for Book of Cooking, see last episode, see last uh, segment where March was no cooking. <laughs> we had events every day. So we just had small things at home and then gone out to eat in between. Uh, when, we, when we do game storm, we'll often go down for a while, play some games, and then take a break to stand up. <laughs> stretch after sitting down to play games, although I did play some of the games standing up to help my back. Um, but then we get that little break where we'll go have a meal somewhere and we try it out. A couple new restaurants, at least one new restaurant. Yeah, a couple new restaurants downtown. Uh, that was fun. But I do have... Yep, that's what I smelled. This is from the vendor room at GameStorm. This is Friday afternoon tea. This is the Bard's Blend. And last year, Friday, the proprietress of, of the tea had, had me smell this one because I liked the Inara blend. It has black tea, ginger root, sugar, and natural vanilla flavoring. It is one of my very favorites. So I was out of that. So I definitely had to get that. So, I am drinking the last of my ba last bag of Bard's Blend, and I make coffee tea. So, I will put tea in my French press, steep it for four or five minutes, and then add a scoop of ground coffee. So, this time it was um, vanilla from World Market, a vanilla coffee, French vanilla, I think. And then I put in a little bit of creamer and some French vanilla Tarani syrup, and it is delicious. It tastes like cupcakes. So I am going to be entering, doop, 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 where did my little cursor go? There we go. I'm gonna be entering Friday's um, giveaway, which had me take a photo or video matching one or all of the following categories. A solo tea party, a group tea party, and an inanimate object tea party. So Kaylee is joining me, as well as you, to be my group tea party. And I will take a picture of this and upload it to the interwebs and enter the contest. <laughs> Kaylee says hello. She's sitting here on my desk. <laughs> so that's my, that's my fun, silly cooking. Not quite cooking for today. But it's delicious. All right, fanciful chatter. I am wearing my new earrings. Let's see, these are little meeples. They are game pieces turned into earrings, and they're pink meeples. <laughs> Aren't they awesome? I love them. I love them. They are so cool. Um, I am also wearing a scarf that I made, which is kind of a long infinity cowl because I tied it up and it has little ribbons. So I had made this just free form. I'd made it with these little holes thinking I could tie them up like little corset spots and it just never really worked. So I saw this in my, in my closet this morning. I have often worn it looped around like this. I do kind of like the little ribbon sticking out, but I don't wear it very much. And I loved this yarn. This is Black Trillium. I think it's probably her Marilon base. It's a little, there we go, that's a little better color. Um, black, black Ruby, I think, Ruby Black. Might have been the colorway, it's an old one. Um, I have another Another item that has the same colorway in it, but I loved this yarn. I made these cute little 
motifs at the bottom that kind of looked like the bottom of the red shawl. It just never worked out. So I think I'm going to rip this out and it's going to become something more beautiful. Does that sound like a good idea? Something I will actually wear because this is a color I absolutely love and it's sad that it's sitting there in a scarf that I rarely wear. It is cool. I do like it. I just think I can make something cooler. So that would be the fanciful chatter for you guys today. Okay, so happiness continues. Uh, yesterday's yoga class, we talked about gratitude, and it was a super great way to start out the class, reminding us to be grateful, especially for the things that our body does. Um, and so that made me really happy. I'm also really happy that it's almost April. March has been so busy and I'm looking forward to a new month and getting into a new routine and it's just, I like April. April's my birthday month. I'll keep telling you all the way through April. <laughs> um, so that is the happiness that I am thinking about today. All right, guys, I think we're going to call that good for today. Um, you can follow me around the internet. I am Christine on Ravelry, Christine with a K. Um, I am KDLB, just the letters, on Instagram. We have a wonderful Ravelry group under Yarnings Podcast. And you can find the show notes and links to everything I talk about today on yarningspodcast.com. All scooched together. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. That's the story. Bye.